So we are going to learn how to use buttons style one today. So I have randomly selected this image from the internet. There are two things that we need to do. First thing, get rid of the background. Second thing, separate this remote into two different layers, being active and passive. So there are several ways of doing it. We can do it in GIMP, but we will rather do it a smarter way. We will use Microsoft's designer. So that's the website that you need to go to, designer.microsoft.com slash design. And then I'm actually going to move this image over, line it up, resize it. And there is an option there. So I've got my image selected. The option says remove background. Let me get rid of the background, although I won't be able to tell a difference because it was white. And now I duplicate this image. The reason why I've duplicated is because I want to use one of these images as active and the other one as passive layer in GIMP. So now that we've removed the background, what we need to do is define the active regions on this remote, meaning all of these buttons where we want some sort of an activity to occur. So every time you press a button, something should, should happen. Either you send a command or you do something about it. So the way that we do it is we use quick select. And then I'm going to select all of these buttons in this image one by one. And then once I've selected them all, I'm actually going to delete it so that I can define my active area. So it's going to take some time. Sometimes it goes crazy as well, where it selects the whole image instead of the area that you're interested in. So you'll have to position your mouse very precisely where it only selects the area that you're interested in. So far, it's going very well. And three more buttons to go. And the last one there. And now what we do is we just move our mouse out of the way and press delete. Or, sorry, remove object. So it has deleted all of those buttons for us. Now that is what's going to define the active area for us. So now we have got two layers. The first layer where we have removed all the buttons and the second layer where there are buttons. And the two images are exactly the same size. So I don't have to do a rescaling to make these two images overlap. So. What we now need to do is download it. It downloads a zip file in your downloads folder. Once it's done, we unzip the folder in our downloads folder. And we are going to bring it into So and that is this layer. I've selected the other two layers that we just downloaded from designer. And I just click and drag into this area in GIMP. And it's not the same size. So there are several ways we can resize these two images. In this instance, I would rather link these two and then rescale it so we're going to do it several times so that's why i'm using this method as we go on to more complex user interface designs i scale it and i've got two different layers here so one layer where we have actually got a cutout we call it remote underscore active layer and the other one we call it passive 
because nothing in this image is going to change. So there is one more step that we need to do. So let's add another layer. Let it be the same size, fit it with transparency, press OK. And now what we want to do is select all of these areas in that active region. So that was incorrect layer that was selected. So before I make a selection, I have to select active layer or the layer that we marked as active. I click into one of these regions where the active area is. Now it's select the other layer that we just created, a blank layer. And I need to fill this out with any color of your choice. I'm using red, you can use any other color. I would use base color as much as I can and fill those regions out onto the new layer. This is the cleanest way to mark the active areas. So now that I have almost finished it, select none. Now if I actually remove the visibility flag on the active layer or what we mark as active, so we can see on the newly created transparent layer, I've got the areas where all the buttons should be. Now let's see how it looks. Adjust the opacity of the layer on the top. And it looks nice. And it all overlaps. One thing that I've just noticed, this is volume up button, volume down. And there are actually two buttons underneath. So this is not an active area where it says VOL or for volume and channel. So we need to separate this button there. So what I do is I put a guide so that I know what I'm doing. And I draw, I select this layer that we just created. Draw a rectangle on it. And hit delete so that it separates these two buttons into upper and lower. Move it over. I'm on the same line. Release it and then hit delete. So I've separated this region into two different areas because they were two different buttons. Although on the top image, it looked like one single button, but it's not. So there is one button there, one button there. Whereas what it drew for us was one single continuous button or active area, which wasn't right. We select none, bring the opacity level back to 100. And now we need to export this layer as active region or active PNG. So I've done it already, but I'll show it to you. So that's how you export it. You select active, give it some name, export. In my case, I've already had that file, so I have to replace it. In your case, it just shows you another pop-up and you click export. Now let's rename this to remote active areas. We can still keep this layer. If we want to delete it, we can, but I would rather leave it for now. Now we will be moving on to the integration side of it. Now that I've exported my active file, my passive file, I have to run a Python script that brings up this open dialog which says open file active file. I select my active file and then it brings me up the open dialog again to load the passive image file. That's our passive file. So I select it, 
click open and then it asks for a control positions file that we haven't created as yet it's a text file so we right click new text document and we name it remote button positions click outside select the file open it and now it should bring up this on our screen so what this does is that it lets us define what each button does so if we press f1 on our keyboard it changes the view and i've used some basic image processing to find out the centroids of all the buttons and also the regions that are actually defined so now all i have to do is just go back press f2 go back to the passive view right click it and then we define the button so button column because it's an AV button, I press enter. This is a TV button, so I say button column a TV. This is power button, so I go button column power and hit enter. And like so, I define all the buttons so i'm actually defining the names of all these buttons that we can actually use later one other tip here is that you go back to the active area view by pressing f1 on your keyboard and if i click anywhere outside these active regions you will see up on the top it says click outside active region whereas when i click it inside the active region it has internally given a number to each button that is of no use to us but every time we click within that active region it should say that you are within that region and if i click outside it it should say that it you have clicked outside so that's kind of an assurance that tells us that the area that has been detected is correct and also the limits of that area there will be a few instances where you will see this line that's actually enclosing the active region but it will be like a broken line now in this instance i've already checked it and there is no such broken line but there will be or there might be some instances where it does happen now if that happens in your case let me show it to you what that image looks like and how you can check the detected region so this is the image file that has been saved and as I can see, this orange line, it's all continuous. All these pixels are touching each other, so there are no gaps. Whereas if you find at any point in time that you're clicking within a region, but it says you have clicked outside an active region, then it means that there is a broken line somewhere, the orange line, and it hasn't completed the loop as to speak now there are some tricks to fix those and as we progress into the course if we find ourselves in that situation we'll see what the remedy is to fix that for now that's all that we need to do or that's all that what remains for us is define or give a name to all of these buttons here
now after all the hard work that image processing has done for us and i have given names to all of these buttons all that i had to do was load this passive image up on the screen and load the areas or the active areas on the button so i've used a for loop to load all of these buttons here on this remote and i'm using class s1 which means it's style s1 button so let's see how it performs so whenever i click any button on this remote on this terminal i get to see the name of the button that has been pressed so if I click anywhere outside the active area, I do not get any event here. But as soon as I click within the active area that has been defined, I see the name of the button here. That is the command that I have issued. So no matter how complex the shape of the button is, or how regular it has been at what angle it has been for example this record button and stop button is at an angle but we don't see any deterioration or of performance if i click outside the area it doesn't register that as a valid button click whereas as soon as i click within the active area that has been defined we do get a feedback write your logic in this function here to do whatever you want to do when a button is pressed and that's how you do it